Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here today to um, just talk about Jesus with my family. I really, this is my family. I've I'm so grateful for this church. I'm grateful for my pastor and how you lead us and to be a part of the team, our staff here, and, um, and to be a part of kids. I'll just tell you a little bit about me in case you really don't know me. Um, most of you probably do, but I grew up in Wyoming and born in South Dakota. I am one of five kids. Um, I'm the fourth oldest of 52 first cousins, come from a very big family. We don't count the second cousins. It's in the hundreds, right? Um, I was a music teacher for 14 years. I taught choir and orchestra and band. I knew in third grade I was going to be a music teacher. I loved music, and I couldn't believe in third grade that families didn't grow up learning to read music and sing. I thought that was normal. And so I went home, I told my mom, I have to be a teacher. These parents are not raising their kids to sing and to read music. And um, so it's just been a love my whole life. My whole family has loved music. But um, 21 years ago, the Lord gave me a gift. And that gift is Steve Cooper, who is my husband. I'm grateful for him. He is not sitting down here this service. He was second service, but he went home to get the grill ready because he's going to grill some T-bones for me today. Yeah, are you jealous over there, right? I know how you love to grill. So he went home to make dinner, but we do have our two lovely daughters here, Ava and Eliza. Ava is a sophomore at Moore Park College, and Eliza is a senior at Newberry Park High School. We're very blessed with our, our kids, thankful for them. Um, I was about four when I gave my life to the Lord. My mom has told me that because I don't remember it. I just remember that Jesus is my best friend, and he was with me wherever I went. When I was 18 and a senior in high school, I was baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. And from them, I made a lot of mistakes. And I had to come back to my Redeemer and have him restore me. And I'm so grateful that he did. We all have a story of how the Lord has, has saved us. And that's another, that's another sermon. Um, I'm in kids ministry. I love it. You probably heard the cheering. That's because we have 99 people serving in kids ministry. So go team, right? Love it. Love it. So today when I was thinking about what to speak on, by the way, it was not four or five months ago. It was like a month ago. Yes. Yes. To get... <laughs> Four or five months. <laughs> You're funny. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> I was thinking about, I, I probably ignored the email. That was one that went right to trash, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I don't think so. Anyway, um, a while back, a couple, and it's actually been like a couple years ago, my mom and I, we talk on the phone. We hold each other accountable. We're always sharing things about Jesus with each other. And she said to me, I've started this um, this whole thing on belief and believing, you know, and I'm really studying believing. And I go, that's great, mom, because we believe, you believe, I believe, we're believers, this is good. And then she said to me, but do you really believe? When you hear it, when you say it, do you really believe it? And I was like, wow, I better get back in the word because I'm not sure if I really believe everything that I'm saying, and I want to believe, I want to believe. So I'm going to talk about believe today. And this is actually what it says in the, um, the dictionary, believe. Accept something as true. To have a firm, wholehearted conviction. To be firm, stable, established. To believe solidly. I want to encourage you to believe today. Because you can believe in this. Um, the kids video that you just saw that said, that's the truth, friends. You better believe it. At the end of every video in our kids' curriculum, our littles, this is like our toddlers, one and a half through five-year-old, that's what it says at the end of every single story that they hear about Jesus. And that's the truth, friends. You better believe it. And for our older kids, same thing. They say, you can believe this, that God is with you forever, wherever you go. Whatever it is, they always say, you can believe this. And I knew in my heart when I'm seeing this, 
I better believe it because I'm leading those kids and telling them to believe it. So today we're talking about believing. And it starts once, right, where you're believing in Jesus. I've made this decision. I believe in Jesus. One and done? No. Every day you get to wake up and keep believing. And what am I believing for today? Every day we get to believe in what the Lord has for us. And it never ends. That, by the way, that's the abundant life in Jesus. That's when you live a life so full because every day you're waking up and you're believing. Jesus, what do you have for me today that I get to believe in? Because I'm going to believe in it, whatever you show me. So, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that you are giving me the words to speak, but you are the power behind it. And we need your power. We need your grace. And I just thank you that you are here with us in the midst of us. Thank you for your words in Jesus' name. Amen. So number one, we were created to believe. From the very beginning, we were created to believe. It started in the garden. Adam and Eve in the garden, Genesis 2, 17, and it says this, and the Lord commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So when my kids were toddlers, <laughs> They went through this phase where in the car, they did not want to get in their car seat. And they pushed against their car seat, and they didn't want to get in it. And I would say, but it's there to keep you safe. It's protecting you. And I, you need to wear your car, be in your car seat just like mommy needs to wear her seat belt, right? It's to protect us. It's to keep us safe. The Lord wanted us to believe him because he did not want us to experience death. I wanted my girls to believe me because I didn't want them to experience what could happen if we were in a car accident. I wanted them to be safe, and that's exactly what God was saying to Adam and Eve. Believe me. Believe, right? Because you will die. And they had that choice to believe, and we know what happened. She chose to believe the liar in the garden. She could believe God or she could believe the liar. And she chose to believe what he was saying. And he said this, it's good for you. This tree's good. It won't hurt you. It will make you like God. And she ate of the apple and death entered the world. Death entered. You will believe in something because you were made to believe. You were made to believe. So who do we believe? Do we believe the liar? Do we believe Satan, the lies he's telling you? Do you know his voice and what it sounds like? Or do you believe who God says you are and his voice? Do you know the sound of his voice? Do you know that you are a child of the Most High God? Love that. So when I wake up in the morning, one of the first things I do is grab my phone. And I pretty much always go right to the weather app. I am literally turning into my father. Yes, I need to check the weather 24-7. I have multiple weather apps. I love it. There's like no weather here, right? I'm from the Midwest, and I'm just like, what's the, what's the weather? And I have multiple towns. Okay, so the, my family's in this town. I, uh, it's, so what I did is I took my Bible app, and I moved it on my phone to where I have the weather app my most favorite weather app. So when I wake up in the morning, I hit the weather app, and up comes the word of God. <laughs> up comes the verse of the day, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Wait, I'm going to go to the whole chapter. <gasps> that's a good chapter. What's the next chapter? And pretty soon, I'm filling myself up with the word of God. Then I took it this week, and I moved it in between Instagram, weather app. Oh, I hate to say this, the NFL app, another just like go-to for me, right? But I wanted to put that word in me because when I would go and hit Instagram and I'm like, first thing in the morning, I'm like, good, everybody's still perfect. They're all still living perfect lives. Great, just what I needed to hear, right? Everybody's perfect. But that's not the truth, right? It's fun. It has its place. I get social media. But the truth is the Bible. And I want to open up that Bible app. That's what I want to read. 
This a uh, couple of weeks ago, I saw this picture of a couple of people, famous people, sitting together, enjoying some popcorn, chit-chatting. They were watching a baseball game. It was President George Bush and Ellen DeGeneres. And if you happen to look on Twitter, they were torn to pieces. Everybody was slamming them that they were sitting together, these two people who were completely different. And you know what I said? I said, oh, they're just living the word of God. I don't know who they are, but the word of God says, love your neighbor as yourself. Who do you need to sit next to? Who do you need to share popcorn with? Who do you need to love? Right? Who's that person? <laughs> and then who do you believe, God or do you believe the devil? Do you believe what he's saying? Because it says in James 2.19, it says this, you believe there is one God, that, that's, you do well, that's good. Even the demons believe and tremble. Even they believe, right? It says that um, when Jesus died, we love that, right? And he rose again. We love that. We celebrate Easter. He rose again. But what happened in the three days? because he was gone for a while. And in those three days, it says that he went to hell and he conquered death and he conquered the grave. He conquered it, right? Because death in the garden had entered into the world. And he went to hell. Some say that he took the keys, right? Because the keys are ownership. This is my house now. I own this house. Now I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me because what I did when I was in hell. So when I rose again, there's no more death for you. I have conquered it. There's no more grave for you because I have brought you up out of the grave. It's Jesus, right? This is the only one. He is the only one. I, I wish there was another. There's people who come to me, and I, I met these three wonderful women, and we were talking about Jesus. And one of them said, but there's so many good things in this religion, in this religion, in this. And I said, yes, there is. There are good things in a lot of things. But the truth is, Jesus is the only one who went down into the grave, who went down into hell and took the keys, who said, that's it. I'm the one. I'm the only one who can bring you to the Father. But you have to believe him. You have to believe him. It says this in John. Love John. John 11. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's what he's asking. John 7, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I want that to come out of my heart. John 12, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. What has you pulled down into darkness? Are your feet lodged in the miry clay? There is only one who can pull you up out of that, and his name is Jesus. John 6, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, shall have ever everlasting life. 1 John 5 says this, If you believe he is the Son of God, you are his witness. If those children believe that he is the Son of God, they are a witness to Jesus. If our youth believe that he is the Son of God, they are his witness. Do I have a witness in the room? Because I'm pretty sure I do. We've got some witnesses here. The last thing that Jesus said before he ascended into heaven, after he had come back and shown himself, he said, I leave, I give to you the Holy Spirit, but to all of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth, you are my witness. You are my witness. That's the last thing he said. He didn't say to the ends of the earth. He said to the end of the earth. We get to believe to the end of the earth. Those kids believe to the end. My grandchildren believe to the end. I want them to believe to the end of the earth in Jesus, what he's done for us. Why should you believe? Why should we believe? And I'll tell you, when you start to believe the word of God, you start 
coming to church, bringing your kids, bringing your youth on Wednesday night, and you start to understand, you start to discover Jesus, and you keep believing, and then all of a sudden, your faith starts coming to life. Your faith starts coming to life. I believe this. You start saying scripture and you start believing it. You're saying greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Did you hear that? Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And I believe that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wherever I am, <laughs> whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I am anxious for nothing. God has not given me a spirit of fear, right? But of power and of love and a sound mind. And as you start speaking that scripture, before you know it, you start to tell the difference between the voice of the father and the voice of the liar. And that is so important. This this is the voice of God. This is his word. We're supposed to read this word, let it sink deep into us because this is the truth. So when the liar comes and start to, starts to say, you are not a good enough dad. No, 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 you'll never be a good husband. A wife, a mother, grandmother, no, no, no. You are not good enough. You think you can be redeemed? Your sins forgiven? What you've done? Yeah, pretty sure those sins won't be forgiven. Well, guess what? That's the lie of the devil. And you will start to recognize that voice and go, no, that is not the voice I listen to. I listen to the voice of my father. He says, I am forgiven. I am a good father. I am a good mother. He is standing with me. I stand on the rock of Jesus Christ. And let me remind you, Satan, who I am, because I am a child of the most high God. So get your words and leave because I know who I am. And every day I wake up and I believe and I speak that word and I start saying that word and I believe and I believe and pretty soon I go and I tell someone else because I believe it so much I have to tell someone else and I start to spread the good news and before you know it I'm a witness. I'm a witness because I believe. We're witnesses because we believe. We believe in you Jesus. What do you need to believe for? Do you believe that he can forgive you and set you free from sin? Do you believe that he wants to restore you? He wants to restore what was stolen from you, what was taken from you by Satan. He wants to give back to you so much more. Do you believe that you're a faithful friend? Do you believe that your marriage is blessed of God, even though it's falling apart? Do you wake up and say, no, God, I'm standing and I'm believing you for this marriage. You have set it apart. You have put us together. Let no man tear this marriage asunder. We are together in this. Do you believe that he's your healer? and receive your healing in Jesus' name. It is for you. That's why he died on the cross. We say, but God, you don't understand. Look at all of this I'm bringing with you. Tyson said, all the baggage. And he said, yes, I want your baggage. That's what I do. I fix it. You can't fix it. I had someone tell me a long time ago, and she said, someday I'll receive Jesus because I was talking to her about Jesus and she said when I get it all together when I've got it all right you can never get it all right there's only one who can do that and he's Jesus and he wants to do that he wants to what do you believe in you were made to believe what do you believe in Believe in Jesus and what he has for you. Believe in his word. Mark 9, 23 says this. If you can believe, if, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. All things, but if you can believe, you can do this. You can believe. If you stand firm, grounded with your whole heart and you believe, all things are possible. See, in the garden, when we didn't believe, I say we because it was mankind. 
we were standing there in that garden. That's where I am right now until I'm saved. We were in the garden and we didn't believe him and we ate from the tree and we were set on a path to die and God could have left us there but he didn't for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes believes whoever believes in him will not die but you will have everlasting life with Jesus do you believe because you were made to believe you're going to believe something let's believe in Jesus let's believe in his word Let's stand together, family. I don't mean really stand. No, I meant let's stand in faith together. <laughs> hey, let's stand. Oh, I love you, God. Would you pray with me? Oh, God, I know that there are people all over this room and in their hearts, they're believing for something. You see that. You know what each one is believing for. You've brought us all here to this moment to believe. So right now, I ask that you fill us with your power. Fill us with your strength. Fill us with your hope as we all believe together. Let our faith rise as one as we believe that all things are possible to him who believes. To him who believes. And if you'd keep your heads bowed for just a moment, there is no way I can talk about believing without asking you if you want to believe. Because there may be some here and you've never believed in Jesus Christ and believed that he is the son of God. And today is the day you are here for a reason and you can believe that the Lord is moving on your heart right now. He wants you to bring everything, just who you are, to him. He doesn't care. He wants it. He wants you to lay things down at the cross. He wants you to lay down shame and burdens. But we have to receive him. We have to believe in him. So I'm going to ask if there is anyone here and you want to believe in Jesus, you want to receive him, you want your sins forgiven, today is the day. And I'm going to ask you to look up and raise your hand at me. So one, today is the day. Two, you can do this. This is for you. Three, raise your hand if you want to believe in Jesus today. And I'm going to agree with you. If there's anyone here, yes, I believe with you. I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Church, let's pray this together. Say it after me and let's believe it. Let's believe it. Dear Lord, today I believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Please forgive my sin. Wash me white as snow. I surrender my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Church, would you please stand? Let's worship the Lord together.